So you've just picked up Battletech, the Game of Armored Combat set. Maybe you've also added the head-to-head starter set. And the question in this podcast, the question in this vlog, building on some of the comments, where do you go next? Because one of the great things about Battletech is the narrative and scope of the gaming universe, the diversity of the models, so many different ways to explore and play. That's before we even get into the actual legitimate role-playing aspects of the game, if you want to go in that direction. Admittedly, it is a little bit overwhelming. But what I want to do is build on the strength of the core set, because all of the mechs in there are fantastic. The hex maps that they give you to start out are really solid, and it's a great springboard, naturally, as a starter set, Game of Armored Combat, into the hobby. So what I would be looking at here, and we're going to try and approach this in manageable segments, because I'm I'm warning you. Full disclaimer here, miniature wargaming is very, very addictive. And looking to build out your collection and combine certain mechs, you start out small, you think you're done, you're really good, you've got a couple of houses and mercenary lances to play, and then next thing you know, it's just completely out of control. So you're going to get there, but approaching it bit by bit, piece by piece, looking to get the most out of your models, and at the same time, allow you to kind of slowly acclimate yourself into it. I would begin by exploring light mechs, simply because the I understand from the perspective of the game why the Commando and the Locust were included. Certainly we want to have a diversity of mechs there with light, medium, heavy, and assault, but by including more light mechs into the set, based with the mechs that they've given, uh, specifically the Awesome and the Battlemaster, even some of the heaviers like the Thunderbolt, and the catapult, they're all amazing mechs. To go up against light mechs, uh, light mechs are really difficult to play. Essentially, you could take one or two hits, and while you're going to play them in a recon, scouting, indirect fire kind of way, there are certain missions here and there that you're going to play where you have to engage with your light mech, a medium, or possibly even a heavy mech on there. So, By including more light mechs in the box, that's going to skew it a little bit and and make it a little bit harder to play. Yet at the same time, they needed to give us a couple of light mechs. So I would begin by looking to acquire two or three, maybe four other light mechs. Because certainly with the mediums and the heavies that are included, you've got a solid, solid anchor. As soon as you look at that, then I would look to jump into adding some heavy mechs. Because that's going to allow you to go up against the assault mechs or at the same time take two of the medium mechs in keeping to throw up against a heavy mech on there. And certainly the Wolverine uh, included in there and the Griffin, fantastic, absolutely 100% um, solid mechs with that, expanding your collection out. I would also keep an eye out for, I don't want to give too much, that would be the mech side keeping an eye out for the various hex maps that Catalyst is going to release. Now, as of this podcast, the Grassland Mats is the newest release. That's going to give you a lot more tactical diversity, a lot of different ways to explore the missions. Now, you can print and play. There are ways to make your own hex maps on there, and pushing in that direction is completely viable. However, you are going to acquire more maps to play on. This is why I want to recommend that. Playing on the standard one hex map, or possibly even two hex maps put together, not in a bad way, in a very deliberate way, it artificially speeds up the game. It it forces you, you're physically bound by the maps, to engage on there. There's less places to run and hide and maybe start to attack, and then if the attack doesn't quite work out or you get hit pretty bad, you can pull back. There might be multiple objectives, um, excuse me, multiple ways to approach objectives on there. So we want a fast and furious game of armored combat. You want your mechs uh, shooting, blowing things up, punching each other, death from above, all that types of crazy, amazing battle tech stuff. Smaller hex maps do that. As soon as you now put four hex maps together or expand it out, now it's becoming more of a size of a traditional wargaming table on there. It becomes a lot more tactical. The game inflates and it's going to take longer, of course. But tactically, it changes the perspective. With any war game, you can never have too much terrain. You can never have too many options. Uh, with the hex maps, if you include the grassland pack, 
plus what's included in the Game of Armored pack, uh, like a deck of cards, you can literally shuffle it up under the table, randomly pick one, and after uh, mech sides have been determined what you're going to play, okay, here's the recon, here's what we're playing on there. That, having more hex maps is going to, again, play into your models and really push and help you to get the most out of your model collection. I'm going to limit it there because we can go on and on and on, but I think that's a, a reasonable place to start that's going to carry you over in the next six to eight months, get you up on the tabletop, give you some more tactical options, and put you in a good, good, solid, solid position to then grow your collection even larger.